Hi, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And we're, we're the, the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel and tonight's Q&A. We're so excited to be here. Happy Fourth of July. We hope you're having a great day. Yeah. Don't be eating too many hamburgers or hot dogs, or maybe you even started a new project for the Fourth of July. Either way, it's awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight for our questions and answers. And we are going to we have a couple of questions. Uh, one yes. question for sure from last week, and we kind of wanted to address it during our Q&A because it'll probably help everybody out. Uh, so this is from uh, Serendipity. Hey, Serendipity. It's Ed and Barb here. We kind of we got your question. And, you know, it, it is very difficult sometimes to make sure that your copper foil is centered on your glass. However, now keep in mind, if your glass is a little bit textured, sometimes it's thicker and thinner in different places. So that's going to make it a little more difficult for you. The other thing is, is you may want to, if you're having, a, you know, trouble, it could be the way you're holding it, your, your wrist or the back end of your thumb is hiding as you're hiding what you're trying to do. The other thing is, is you may just want to, uh, like we talked about in our Q&A last week, is just get one of those glass star tabletop foilers and it's going to center that foil no matter what you do to it. And then the other thing is, is they make a hand foiler and a hand crimper. The hand foiler acts very similar to like a potato peeler and you can just foil that glass like nobody's business. The foil sticks to the glass, the brown paper comes out the back end. And then when you're done, they have a little crimper you hold in your hand and it looks like a little, just a little white plastic child's pistol. And you just kind of wrap it around the glass and it does it up. The yeah. other thing. Yeah. And I've had to do this before too, because I was having problems. I just, I cleaned my glasses. <laughs> Sometimes it's the simplest things that make all the difference in the world. So, And then too, you could ask someone that has really good eyesight and wants to help and learn about stained glass. You could ask them to foil. Sure. See if they're, sometimes some people are better at other tasks. You may be good at cutting glass and another person may be good at foiling. They may love to foil. I love to foil. And Ed's a, an expert at cutting glass. So, you know, that goes well together. Yeah, so yeah. we have that good trade-off between the two of us. Yeah, we and can get things done a lot quicker. Yeah, so you can get things done a lot faster. That's right, Barb. And, you know, it's not always about how fast you do things. No. But, but you know, you do want to, if you got a lot to foil, you, you don't want it sitting there for weeks. You want to go ahead and get it over yeah. with. So. Yeah. so that was a good question. Yeah, I mean, it is we, a good question. We get question. that question a lot. So it's... You know, yeah, it's and if, one of the things you just practice, practice, you know? Yeah, practice, practice. And being able to see, even just try something as simple as just changing the lighting where you're working at could help you, uh, you know, tremendously. So, but anyway, I um, want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Hey, everybody's good. And uh, we... Uh, we don't have any questions yet tonight, but if you got well, everybody anything knows on your everything. mind, I know and they do. But that, I mean, we've got some smart people that watch our channel, and so um, any questions that? Uh, what about this little thing right here? Do we? Yeah. So we that? well, we had somebody ask that last week. They said sometime earlier in your early videos, Ed and Barb, you showed a little gizmo to help you hold the lamp while you're repairing it. Well, y'all, this is the gizmo right here, okay? This piece of equipment articulates by some very simple wood joints. But this right here comes off. And I can move the camera closer. This comes off. I'll bring it over can here you, a little bit. Maybe, oh. you could, maybe I could do it. Let me do it because... It's easy. I mean, you can make one. If you guys do lamps or you'd like to. So this uh, just goes on the top and holds the share that with someone base cap. Lamps. That's a nifty tool. Yeah. So what I'm going to, I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to tighten this joint here up. Okay. Can you put it? And I'm going to take this wing nut off right here. Can and I'm going to set it right here. So what this is, is two pieces of quarter inch plywood 
separated by a three quarter inch block. Oh well, and now you can see this is like this, and then this, okay, this fits down in here, and then we have we have a a carriage bolt, okay. A washer, a wing nut, and another washer. So what happens? This moves freely, okay? But once you anchor this plate to the table, you can set your lamp right here. And all you need to do is snug that up, and now... That'll lay down. You can articulate this so that no matter how you turn this, your lamp, okay, your lamp is always level so that you can solder your joints with the lamp being level. So your solder is not running left. It's not running right. It's not running up. It, of course, it's not going to run up. It's not <laughs> running down. It's not dripping on your leg or on your shoes or on the carpet. Your or on your hands. So this is a really interesting piece of equipment. And it was handmade. And, and I haven't looked this gentleman up, but it's handmade in Schenectady, New York by Fred Gray Stained Glass Products. I, I looked it up and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find him either, but Fred Gray in Schenectady, spell that three times, Schenectady, New York. And, you know, he may be around. If not, this is just a, a very simple piece of equipment. But I will tell you this. Gray spelled with an A. Yeah. I use this every time I repair a lamp. The other thing I use it for is every time I custom build someone a lamp. I use it for that. This thing is awesome. Three screws in your workspace, a little articulation, and you are, my friend, all set to work on your lamps. I hope this helped you. You can build one of these. The main thing is, yes. is the articulation of it. And you can use really any kind of joint so that, and you can see it looks like a little don, little wooden dinosaur. <laughs> but let me tell you, it works like a, a dream that, boat Annie. Bucks. There you yeah. go, well, you know, this was probably really popular, Barb back in the 70s and 80s when people were still mm -hmm. building lamps before they got shipped overseas. Right. Yeah. Now, you know, once the lamps went overseas and uh, the big box stores got a hold of them, I don't know about y'all, but I quit building lamps. <laughs> I can't build a lamp for $89. So we don't. Okay. Joey's got a question. Oh, Amber said she could have used that last week. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We might make a pattern of that and put that online. That might be a cool thing. Yeah, we may put we may Instead make a of pattern of the it. product itself. Just put the pattern in the parts. Yeah, because um, it's just a simple little one by two and some another project. Yeah, yeah. but that might be a nice thing. I mean, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Very useful. Joey's got a question. He said he brought a new circle cutter. Yay! <laughs> Um, he wanted to know if he should use oil on the blade every time uh, he used the one at the shop and he said they didn't use oil all the time. So we right. wanted to know. Well, Joey, let me tell you, when you first get your circle cutter, I would say, yes, use oil on each pass. Don't use a cotton ball to disperse the oil under the cutter head, under the wheel, because you'll get cotton wrapped up inside of the little nut on the turret, okay? Use a paper towel, a little bit of cutter oil on it, go around it, take your paper towel off. Mark where you start because when once you do put cutter oil on your glass, you can't see it. When you come around, make sure you, you're getting close to where you stop, where you started, so then you wanna stop. You don't wanna go over, over the score that you just made, but use your cutter oil for probably, uh, 
just until when you when you make your circle, the glass doesn't flake. Okay. So your cutter head is going to get dialed in to your left or right hand, Joey. Once it's dialed in, you'll know the pressure you need not to make the glass flake or the or the score go too deep into the glass. So once you get it dialed in, you can stop with the oil. And periodically you want to oil it. And the other thing is storing that, you probably want to just keep a little paper towel with some oil on it and a rubber band wrapped around the cutter turret just to make sure that you don't get any oxidation, Joey. Good question, buddy. It, hope, it helps everybody, I'm sure. Amber wants to know how Artie is. Artie is okie dokie. Artie's back home. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> Artie's back home. home. You know, we have, and, and I'm sure everybody does, we just have some really great friends. And they were like, hey, we'll take you to go get Artie. Well, we were like, hey, we didn't ask. They're like, well, okay, we'll take you to get Artie. So we went for a ride. We had a wonderful time with our friends for the afternoon. It's like and two and a half hour ride. So, uh, Artie needs uh, Artie needs new tires, not because the tires are bad, just because we feel safe with new tires. So we're going to get Artie new tires, and then we're going to go back out on the road and yeah. visit some places. Thursday, um, Artie's getting new today. shoes. Yeah, we did make it home okay, and it, it was it was awesome to be able to back her back him back in the driveway here at the studio yeah, because so. we use that for an office now and then and for pop ups and. Uh, so yeah, it's it's good to have him back. Yeah, it's good to have him back. So uh, so we just have to purchase four more tires, and um, we've got those on order. They should be here on Thursday, and yeah. uh, and we'll take pictures. We'll show you Artie's new shoes when we get. Yeah, he's <laughs> got new shoes and a couple other new things. So yeah, so we're to excited make life about more that. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. So thanks again for asking. Thanks for worrying about us because we were like, Whoo! we were we were just a little bit scared. We were. Yeah. Did you have any questions from this week that uh, we needed to answer? No, I, I didn't. Um, we are, uh, you Anyone know. Anyone have we're, any questions you need us to answer or anything on your mind you need to talk about or anything you'd like to share about what you're doing or what's happening in right. your town? Um, any yeah, classes involved in your community? Any classes? Let us know about that. And uh, we are uh, want to thank everybody. Those of you that ordered your new lead nippers, um, I hope they're there. They should be getting there. <laughs> if they're not there today, when you get home from work, they should be there. Um, we yeah, got them we, out. Found, we found out we got we were getting a new modem, so they came in. They put in a new modem, and um, we didn't realize that we had to reset every piece of equipment that we own, which includes all the cameras, the printers. The computers and I'm still not finished. So uh, we had no, some delays right. in getting we're, our packages we're gonna, out. We're going to help you out so much and get you some fast modem response. So it's faster, but I can't. We just got to get it figured out. Yeah. So I've got one camera working so far. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah. And uh, it's it is it's a it's a beautiful day. You know, we have another uh, storm, tropical storm coming up, and I think. Uh, that, who, uh, who lives there? Renee lives Renee, down. Renee, Renee, I and, hope you'll be Ma safe out there. And Magali, I th if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I hope that I am. If not, she's in. She is in um, uh, West Palm Beach, I believe. Magali's in West Palm, and uh, Renee, Renee is in Port St. In Lucie. Port St. Lucie, yeah. And I hope that I'm saying your name right, Magali. If not, shoot it to me and break it down into syllables for me, and I'll make sure that I pronounce it correctly. So we hope on. our friends in Florida are safe and along the East Coast, and that thing just gets on out of here. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking for some bad weather here on Thursday. They oh, say. is it so, Thursday? Okay. Yeah. So. Um. How many panels have we assembled on the live oak window? We've completed. Uh, four and we'll finish two more this week and that will leave us that'll be, we'll be halfway done by uh by mid july that'll give us six panels and we'll have six to go six to go yeah so we'll, we'll be so we're finishing up the end of the week yeah we're finishing up the 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 four arches they're done uh that are in the bottom section now we're finishing up we've we're cutting the bottom section on the left and the bottom section on the right so that we can finish all the blue out 
and then we're going up and Barbara's going to start painting the uh, head and feet on the green heron. Yeah. And also she's going to be painting the, the chest and the feathers on the um, Carolina Wren. The Carolina Wren, what a beautiful little bird she is. So we're starting our paintings the first part about midweek this week. And I just had a, I have pulled out the, the glass for the green heron. And I don't know that uh, not everyone has a green herring or the night heron um, in their arsenal within their wildlife at their homes. But this is a glass. The other way. Yeah. This, and you, I hope you can see this, but this is really iridescent and it's green. I don't know green. if you can see it or not. No, I'm, you can't I'm trying it. to tilt it just a little bit. Nope. You no, can't you can't it. Anyway, see it's it. iridized green. Same exact green as the green heron. As the green heron. And the, now the green heron is about, oh, he's about seven and a half inches tall, life size. And uh, about five and a half inches of it is going to be that iridescent wing. We have them at the house all the time. They fish around the edge of the pond, which is just really awesome, especially this time of year because oh, they've yeah, had their babies. The babies. So, so yeah. cute. And the uh, the kingfishers are actually teaching their young how to fish from the tree limbs hanging out over the fish pond at the house. And that's really cool, too. Yeah, we might do a live stream from the fish pond one night. Yeah, you guys <laughs> might like that. I don't but, know yeah. if we can, but that might be fun. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, okay. Joey, that was a good question tonight, and I hope serpent serendipity. I hope that that helped you out with uh, with your foil. And the best thing to do when you get frustrated is just put it down and walk away and go find yourself a red cardinal out in the yard and say hi. Uh, Mary says that her needle nose pliers are rusty from flux. How are you getting flux on your needle nose pliers? Um, they rusty from just oxidation or uh, yeah, WD4 Needle nose pliers, are she using them for uh, when she's attaching hooks to uh, copper foil projects is that what it is you're oh, okay hold on yeah, I, yeah I use my I, I use an old pair of grousing pliers for that it's old pair, but it's yeah. the same thing you know what you can do though is just every to get you, if you get you a little bucket full of uh, just a like a little planter bucket with sand in it and put some uh, oil in it just make a miniature version of what you would stick your shovel in in the garage. That's what Mary said. And she uses the yeah, just take it and stick it in there and stick it right in there. A little and bit of oil. A little bit of oil in the sand, and every time you dip it, it'll clean that rust motor right oil, off. Right? Motor oil, yeah. yeah. And it can be used motor oil. It doesn't matter. And yeah. then you just take it out, open your pliers up, wipe it off. The flux isn't going to – will you clean the off the oil. You do the same thing with garden tools. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah, you do the same thing with garden tools. Just do it on a much smaller scale. That's all. Uh, Joey wants to know if we ever use a ring saw. Joey, absolutely not. I have had some customers that use the ring saw and they they brought them in to us to uh, align the blades and get them adjusted for them. From, uh, from my experience, they're a little hard to track, and um, but it can be done. The main thing you want to do about a ring saw is, is don't get in a hurry allow the saw to do the work rather than you. Yeah. You're not going to be pushing it. No, let the saw do the work. It's not going to pull it through, but you can see as it cuts and then you want to, you just want to do it very slowly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things you can do with that ring saw though, my friend. Practice, practice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. boy. That's a lot of things a lot with that ring saw. Fun, but yeah. Some cuts may not make it all the way through the entire yeah. project because you're, you know, you're, Right. And keep in mind, you know, there's there's some cuts that uh, just like because it's a continuous blade, you can't do a plunge cut and then drop the blade through it and cut a circle out from inside of it. So remember that because that blade is is hence the ring saw. It's a ring. So you can't operate it like a uh, jigsaw, 
A no, jigsaw. A jigsaw. Yeah. Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Yeah. Or a scroll <laughs> saw. Scroll you saw. Can't yeah. operate it like a scroll saw. But let me tell you, they're a lot of fun. And if you can find one that's reasonable, um, just make sure you change the little rubbers on the belt, you know, the on the run everything, because that's imperative. And keep it clean. Oh man, keep it clean. Keep and that cool. glass dust and off keep, of it. And keep that blade cool. And keep that blade cool. A little a cap full of uh, antifreeze in a reservoir full of water on your ring saw will keep those diamonds so cool that unless you break that saw blade, it'll last you for a very long or time. Or follow the manufacturer's directions because we don't want to lead you. A yeah, no, our, no. I just warranty, but yeah. I'm pretty sure they'll tell you to use coolant. Yeah, you definitely want to use a, a diamond coolant and uh, the... All the big machines I'm gonna use. Get us some more light. All the big machines they use a uh, they use a coolant that's very similar to antifreeze, and it keeps the diamonds cool. I use a little bit of antifreeze in the water that I use for drilling holes and mirrors and things like that. So. Is that better? Wow, Barb! Woo! There we go. There goes my tan. It's gone. <laughs> Okay. So. Oh. Joey, where are you from, buddy? Cat St. Jane is from Kentucky. Oh, hi. Cool. Hey. Hi, Jane. So we have Kentucky, Indiana, Florida, South Dakota, South Dakota. Nice to know everybody. It sure is. It's it's nice to know everybody and know that everybody's kind of is pretty much interested in the same in the same thing and achieving the same goal, which is all of us want to want to be able to do our artwork. We want to enjoy ourselves and we want to learn as much about what we do for a living or a hobby as we possibly can. If there's any videos that you guys would like to see. Uh, let us know. Let us know in the comments or uh, post it on the community page. Um, we're always open for new ideas for uh, for new videos. videos. Yeah, yeah, and you know we'll we'll be happy to do if there's something that um, that you want to become a little more Colorado proficient Springs. in, or or something that you just want to want to learn a little bit more about. We are pretty proficient at a lot of things. So if we can help you, we'll be happy to. And sometimes, sometimes you draw like a, just a blank and you can't, and you can't think and you don't, you know, you want to do something good for your people that are out there and, but you just don't know exactly what it is. What so, everybody needs. So what we want to know need? what you need that we can do for you. Yeah. That's what we want to know. Yeah. And we enjoy these live streams immensely. So we hope that you guys will continue to join in every every Monday night yeah. after. Sometimes we won't have a video. We'll just have a live stream. But we hope to have a video every Monday night at 7, followed by a live stream. So we'll get it right. We'll, we hope that. Yeah, uh, we're still learning. Yeah, we're learning. We got the live stream going now. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> and it really wasn't, wasn't too bad. You know, we had a lot of help from y'all. Think about it. Remember? Turn it, turn it, 180 degrees, 180 <laughs> degrees, turn it, turn it. There it is. Thank you for that. Remember that night? That was awesome. It was our first night. <laughs> so Amber said installation. Um, yeah, I think we might be able to handle like a couple different types of installation. Um, well, you know, every job is so different. So what's everybody installing in? Are you installing in wood? Are you installing in behind glass in existing windows? Uh, are you installing in doors or in metal aluminum storefront frames? Uh, like in a, for instance, a church windows, uh, a lot of them. Uh, church, How about vinyl? Or a vinyl, vinyl window. window. Yeah, How vinyl you? windows. So there's a lot of ways to, uh, to install, but yeah, we could answer some of those questions. Um, we happy to, if we can help, we will. So let me think about that, how we could do that. 
Yeah. Not tonight. I'm not going. No, that. no, no. <laughs> I will think about yeah. it some tonight. Well, you know, notes, and but you know, you can see right over Barbara's shoulder right here. Uh, off her, this is a steel sash window. Now our our workspace is full of these windows, and you know they're we they're uh, we have we have a, a combination of windows. We have the steel sash windows that operate as awnings. And all of our windows operate in our warehouse. Also, we have storefront windows that are fixed glass. We also have storefront windows across the front of our glass studio. And then, of course, we have our wonderful um, barn doors that are over 100 years old in our gallery that are just absolutely beautiful. So, Okay, so uh, Amber's thinking about doors and cabinet doors. Uh, yeah, let's... Well, Okay. We've got some examples around here. We'll show you how we uh, install pretty simple. Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But yeah. uh, Well, for installing in uh, the, the one thing you, the one thing that you always want to remember about installing stained glass in something is don't caulk it in, please. Don't caulk. Please don't caulk your stained glass. Please, please, please. That makes and me. You cry. might ask why. But you, why you, I? you want to know why? If you ever have to take it out, that'll tell you why. Because caulking your stained glass windows adheres them to whatever they're, they're adhering to, and you cannot get them all get them out without breaking them all up. I promise you. I've taken enough windows out that were installed incorrectly in my career to tell you, do not caulk your windows in there. If they're going in a cabinet door, you want to make sure that they fit snug and correctly. Then you want to use push points that are applied. Your push points are applied with a flat, stiff putty knife, and your push points should be roughly every six inches around your cabinet door. Now, a lot of people say, well, they rattle when, if I don't caulk them in. But there is a solution to that. Well, there's a solution to that, and it's just a, it's a very small dot of silicone, top, bottom, and in the middle, and then your push points. Those four little dots of silicone will keep that window from rattling, period. If you install the push points correctly, it won't rattle anyway. And they definitely will not come out. So just you be just careful. You want to go in there, caulk all the way around that wood, and then put that wind in there. Yeah. It'll never come back out. If you're doing clear I mean, glass. breaking it. Yeah, if you're doing clear glass in a cabinet door, you bet. Caulk it. Set the glass in the sealant, put a couple push points in it, and go on about your business. Send it to the customer. But if your customer just spent several hundred dollars on a cabinet door, don't glue it in for them. Use push points, four little points of silicone. Keep it from rattling once they get it home. And do your push points about every six inches, and that'll do it. Most cabinet doors have enough room, so... Joey's wanting, wanting to know if we've ever gotten carpal tunnel from uh, working on stained glass for so many years and what can be done to prevent carpal tunnel. Um, you know, that's stress related. Any, any actions that you do with your body over and over and over again, you need to protect your, protect yourself by taking a break. Sure. Um, you know, you've got to be careful, but I guess that would be from your, your wrist. Well, and you're, and you're, if you're doing Turn. lead work, you're pulling, mm -hmm. you're always constantly pulling. Okay. Um, knock on wood. I don't have any problems with my hands. Um, His hips are the problem. It's my, it's my <laughs> hip that is the problem. However, I started physical therapy today and I'm, seeing an orthopedic surgeon on Wednesday. So we're so excited. I would say, you know, uh, that's a tough one. 
Yeah, I, I, that, I, that's a tough one because I, I I'm not a medical person and I've not no, had and, experience. With and it. my hands don't bother me while I'm doing stained glass, but the first two weeks in the glass blowing studio, mm -hmm. turning the pipe over and keeping a, a pipe rolling like that, this part of my forearm gets as hard as my kneecap. And that muscle really just cramps up for about two weeks until it gets back in shape. So uh, I don't, again, I don't know anything about the carpal tunnel, but I do know the first two weeks of glass blowing season are really hard on my left arm. So um, Mary wanted to know if she could get push points at the hardware store. And do they come in different sizes? I can't remember. Well, the push points that you're going to get at the hardware store, just you get a little pack of them for about $2.99. And there's a hundred of them in there and then get a stiff putty knife. That's about an inch and a quarter wide. And you'll be able to put them right in there. Put, let me tell you something about push point guns y'all that they use in the frame shops. Not ideal for stained glass. Okay. Not ideal at all for stained glass, just because of the way they're made, just because of the way that that push point gun is made. Uh, so get your push points and, uh, from the hardware store, a little pack, a hundred in a pack, about three dollars, and uh, they'll last you forever. And they'll do a lot. They'll do a lot for your work that you're doing. Okay. And, and, and I believe the manufacturer of those push points is going to be Fletcher, and they do Fletcher also. They do make a little a little handheld thing that you put the push points in with. Sometimes you can find that it's about $4.99 and it's just a little offset green handle thing, rubber green handle thing. Mm -hmm. The push point sits right on top of it and you just push it right in. And that eliminates you having to use a flat putty knife. So just trying to help you out there. Yeah. I always use a screwdriver. Yeah. You can use a wide screwdriver too. Um, but you want to make sure Flat putty knife is better. Though. A flat putty knife is better because it covers more surface area and allows you the same pressure going into the wood front to back as you yeah, need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but you know what, Barbara? Barbara used to frame a lot of pictures back that in her was my former first life. Real job. Yeah. So back in the former life, you know, uh, she used to frame a lot of pictures, and she is, you know, she brought that with her, and she's actually taught me a lot of things about framing Aww. pictures. So yeah, so you know, it's all good. It's it all good. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anything else? I don't know. You know what? Um, I just want to thank know. everybody. If you watch that video beforehand at 7 p.m., thank you so much. We yes, appreciate thank it. Thank you. I hope you learned a little bit about the light box and you can see my light box in my studio is about four foot by five foot. It's got two 24 inch by 48 inch light fixtures inside of it and uh i can really enjoy now there are a lot of let me tell you something about a light box if y'all have just a minute i'm going to tell you a couple things about a light box and the light box has a couple of great things that it does for you and there's a couple of things that i was reading about um that are drawbacks on a light box those drawbacks have been uh, assessed and are no longer drawbacks. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you, when you take your, uh, when you take your pattern on the light box and you lay your glass on it, man, one of the great things about a light box is you can turn the glass around. You can do a lot of different things with it and you can pick out that one part of that sheet of glass that you want. That's special just for that particular window. Great. That's a plus column Ching on the pluses. So the, somebody said the downside of using the light box is when you can't see through the glass, how are you going to cut your pattern? Well, that is easily taken care of because what I do, and I have it right beside my light box, is a little stack of clear scrap window glass. I just take it on, onto that piece of glass I lay my clear glass over top of my pattern. I trace that out. I cut the clear glass. I set the clear. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but I cut my clear glass out, put it on top of the colored glass that I want, mark it, and then cut it out and go on about my business. 
There's no reason to cry over spilt milk, y'all. The light box is just a phenomenal piece of equipment that allows you to turn your work into a painting of glass because no, you can't, you can't see through the glass. You cannot see through the glass on the table on the table. And you can put your pattern on there and do that and do that. And I'll tell you what the light box. I love the light box. And, um, and that's why my light box is so big so that I can put big sheets of glass on there and enjoy myself. So anyway, thank you all for watching the video at seven tonight. If you didn't already do it, <laughs> ring that bell for Barbara and I, and then we need you to subscribe. If you haven't done that yet, the bell is more of a, Hey, guess what? Barbara and Ed's coming on. So if you, it's just a notification bell. It'll ring on your end when we're getting ready to have a new video for you. Okay. I'm answering Amber's question. Okay. Uh, she wanted to know what kind of glass we used on the top of the uh, light box. Tempered safety glass. Tempered safety glass pattern number. Oh, pattern number. Pattern number J3. Pattern J3. Yeah. And it's the least expensive of all. It's this. J3 or something. Your glass shop might call it pattern 62. Huh? Or orange peel. Or orange peel. So one of those will get it's you. It's the least, least expensive peel. obscure glass that you can buy for your light box. That can be tempered. Yeah. Quarter inch. Yeah, use quarter inch because there's no reason to use eighth inch. And, uh, you well, know, it's nice and heavy. Make sure the edges of your glass sit down flush with the light box and then you don't have to worry about anything hitting it or coming off of it or dropping on it. It's, it's really quite tough. That's another pattern you need to draw for this. Oh, for website. the light box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think uh, we're all set. Any more questions and we'll let these fine people get back to work or back to play or back this Monday night. <laughs> what's on TV? Anything? I don't know what's on Absolutely TV. nothing. Probably <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. That's right. So yeah. Thanks again for watching the video. Thanks for tuning in this week. Barbara and I, we love you guys. We do. And we're here to help. Thanks we don't, for we watching. don't know everything. If we can't answer it, we'll make, we'll find an answer for you. So thanks for tuning in. Let us know that you got your pliers when they get there. And um, we love you guys. Have and a great week, everyone. Happy 4th of July weekend. Enjoy your hamburgers and hot dogs tonight. We'll see you next week. Bye. From Barb and Ed, we'll see you. Thanks again for asking how we are. That's awesome. We appreciate it.